With an election looming due to the current political crisis in the Federation, there has been much debate as to whether another solution could have been found. There are some, like Premier Mark Brantley, who argued that the Governor-General could have acquiesced to the request of the then six members of Cabinet to remove the Prime Minister and appoint Deputy Prime Minister Sean Richards as his replacement. In his view, this would have avoided an election. But before we went to the GG, we got advice. We took advice in the United Kingdom from a Queen's Council there. I don't mind disclosing his name, Sir Geoffrey Robertson QC senior constitutional lawyer who gave us advice and told us that the GG had the authority on his advice once he was satisfied that the person as prime minister no longer commanded a majority of elected members that the GG could do what was necessary because the GG had an ongoing obligation to be satisfied throughout the term that the person in the chair of prime minister always had the support of a majority of members. The governor general, in response, said he was legally unable to do so. The opposition St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party agrees. Prior to the governor general's response, leader of the Labour Party, Dr. Terence Drew, in a statement, said the governor general could only have removed the prime minister before the first meeting of the National Assembly after an election. The closest scenario to the present situation that is entertained in the constitution is laid out in subsection 7 of section 52, which allows for the removal of the Prime Minister, if and only if it happens before the first sitting of Parliament after the appointment arising from a general election. It has also almost been two years since the last general elections in St. Kitts and Nevis. The Prime Minister, not wanting a motion of no confidence to succeed against him, opted to have Parliament dissolved, with the date for fresh elections to be announced. SK Newsline sought the views of former parliamentarian and leader of government business in the National Assembly, Sam Condor. My understanding of the, of the matter is that uh, the Governor-General did not have the constitutional authority. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't based on good constitutional principles, our constitution, to remove him, to remove the Prime Minister and replace him with another of the of the members but that is why i think uh people suggested that uh the motion of confidence was the only way of removing the prime minister mr brandley may have been relying on chapter 5 section 52 of the constitution to support his claim that the prime minister could have been removed this section says quote whenever the governor general has occasion to appoint a prime minister he shall appoint a representative who appears to him likely to command the support of the majority of the representatives. End quote. Brantley is arguing that if the Prime Minister no longer enjoys majority support, then that is grounds for his removal from the post. But in the same section of the Constitution, in reference to the removal of Prime Minister, it explains the following. The Governor General shall remove the Prime Minister from office if a resolution of no confidence in the government is passed by the National Assembly and the Prime Minister does not within three days either resign from his office or advise the Governor-General to dissolve Parliament. It also says, if at any time between holding of a general election of representatives and the first meeting of the National Assembly thereafter, the Governor-General considers that in consequence of changes in the membership of the Assembly resulting from that election, the Prime Minister will not be able to command the support of the majority of the representatives, the Governor-General may remove the Prime Minister from office. As it stands, the first meeting of the National Assembly took place almost two years ago, to date. It appears a motion of no confidence was the only option available to the six members of Parliament to have the Prime Minister removed from office, but his powers allows him to advise for the dissolution of Parliament, an option Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris used. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline.